what's going on out there? Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This here is the Cool Factor Podcast, and I'm your host, TW, flying solo for now. My man, BQ, got some other obligations going on. He'll be back sooner rather than later so we can, you know, give you the show that you've been used to. But for now, let me catch up to you. Listen, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe button. Give us a rating. Give us a, a five star or whatever the highest quality rating is. A thumbs up. Give us all of that so that we can boost our channel's uh, profile. So thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. When it rains, it pours. And I am in a busy season. Last time I talked to y'all was before the, uh, what was it, Rebellion? Yeah, Rebellion. Uh, was before the show. And they hit the Go Home Show out of the park. And since then, I have just been busy. I was on vacation. Then I came back and just trying to get back on my feet from vacation. Like, just, it's been very, very busy. But I had to get you guys a show this week. See how much I love you? See how much I love you? I went out of my way to make sure you get a show this week. So here I am. You're welcome. All right? Now, (laughs) I just want to catch up a little bit from what we missed. Because if you all saw Impact this week, there wasn't that much on the show that was necessarily must talk about type stuff, although we will get to it. But I want to talk about some of the outside of the ring news first. And I want to start with where we left off pretty much, which was the Omega Rich Swan main event at Rebellion. Now, I don't think anybody with any sense thought that Rich Swan was going to win the AEW world title. And I don't say that to say that Rich Swan is not good enough to win the AEW world title, right? I mean, it's wrestling, right? Like, anybody can win any championship. Tessa Blanchard was a world champion. The Miz is a two-time WWE champion, okay? Anybody can win a championship. It's wrestling. It's 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 not about whether or not somebody is good enough to be the champion or not. It's just the simple fact that this is a story that Impact was telling. This was not a story that AEW was telling. And that's why I think so many people got confused when looking at the AEW Impact partnership, the working relationship, and they're thinking things like, why aren't Impact wrestlers going on AEW? Why isn't AEW promoting the match between Rich Swan and Kenny Omega? And it's like, yo, I've been telling you guys this whole time, this is an Impact story. This is not an AEW story. That's why AEW is not promoting it. That was an Impact pay-per-view. And by the way, this is what I was saying the whole time. Impact was in it for the pay-per-view buys. That was the gamble that they were taking, that people would buy the pay-per-view to see Kenny Omega. People would tune into Impact to see Kenny Omega. So maybe the original conversation for this AEW Impact working relationship wasn't, oh, you know what would be great for both of us if we can get some of each other's talent on each other's show. Maybe it was more like, hey, uh, hey, I'm Kenny Omega, and I want to go work for my friend Don Callis on his show a little bit. Is that cool with you? Cool. I'm going to do that. And I think that's pretty much what the conversation was, right? And the rest of that just kind of, you know, evolved a little bit. And we'll see where it's going, right? We'll see. Who knows? I don't think this is the end of it, but just for this part of it, impact was taking the gamble that by getting the attraction of Kenny Omega, they could up their viewership and ultimately up their pay-per-view buys, right? That's what the end game of this for Impact was the whole time. And based on some of the reporting that was coming out, it looks like it paid off. Um, I haven't seen any specific numbers. I don't have access to that stuff. I really wouldn't even know where to find it. But you guys love Dave Meltzer. And (laughs) according to him, certain cable systems have reported that this Impact pay-per-view has done phenomenally well for an impact pay-per-view so if that's the case among all the various cable systems around the country then impacts their their gamble paid off because they were in it to get more pay-per-view buys and it looks like they got more pay-per-view buys so that's all they were in it for uh aw gets the storyline win right they get the impact world championship they get the you know the rub right for for winning the storyline, but Impact was in this for business all along. That's why when people were, were 
like, oh, this is what kind of invasion is this? And I was saying the whole time, this is not an invasion. Stop trying to make this into something that you've seen before. This is obviously something that you haven't seen before. And this is just basically, it looks like, you know, Impact saying, hey, what do we got to do to let you use it for, for you to let us use Kenny Omega a little bit? And that's what Impact wanted. That's what they've gotten. And it looks like it paid off. So if anything, you have to give Impact credit for the way that they've approached this because this is, uh, you know, it's, it's gotten them what they want, which is business. And you, you get, you got to give these guys credit. I was having this conversation with some some people the other day. You know, when Vince McMahon does thing after thing, business move after business move, to hurt the experience of the fan, but help the company in business, all we talk about is Vince McMahon's business acumen. Oh, he's so smart. That's why he put the territories out of business. He knows how to make so much money. He's you know flipping his product so many ways. That's fine and true, but let's also keep that same energy when another company makes a business move that may not, you know, it, it may not have the fans in mind first, but it definitely has the company's bottom line in mind. And that's what went on here. So you got to give these guys some credit for the good move that they made. Now, another person who was talking about this Impact AEW working relationship was Chris Jericho. I know. Everybody loves uh, Mr. All Lives Matter, Chris Jericho. and um, But he had something to say that ruffled a, a, a few feathers. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to read you a little bit of what Chris Jericho had to say about the working relationship between AEW and Impact. Chris Jericho was uh, on an interview with comicbook.com. And he said this, Our roster is jam-packed as it is. And I think our involvement with Impact has pretty much been what it should be. I'm not saying I'm not saying that in an egotistical way, but AEW is at a completely different level than Impact is. So anything that we're doing with them benefits them a lot more than it benefits us, in my opinion. And I think the fact that they've had Kenny Omega there, they've had Private Party there, that's a bonus for them. Chris Jericho will never go to Nashville and work in an empty studio in front of somebody. I thought you were going to say nobody. There's just a reason. There's just no reason for me to do that. If those guys came over to invade, who are they going to bring? If we needed to take, uh, if, if we needed to make it big, we could. But right now, our roster is so jam-packed, and we're doing such a great job of creating our own stars as is. You could always do an invasion at some point, but I just don't see why that would really benefit AEW right now when we've got so much going on and so many of our own guys who are really breaking through to the next level. I want to keep the focus and spotlight on that. He's absolutely right. 100% right in everything he said there. No lies detected. Listen, Chris Jericho, for all his flaws, for all the things you may or may not like about Chris Jericho, Everything he said there was absolutely correct. AEW does have a bloated roster. They have more guys than they know what to do with. They're signing people, and they'll show up at a pay-per-view and win something, and then you don't see them on TV for two, three, four weeks so they can figure out what to do with them. Or they end up in a tag team with Scorpio Sky. Right? So, uh, Chris Jericho's not wrong. AEW is at a different level than Impact. And Impact is getting the rub by having Kenny Omega there. I'm not sure. I can tell you what it does benefit AEW. It benefits AEW from the standpoint of AEW gets to present itself as the true alternative to WWE. And it's not just what we're offering to you on Dynamite. We're also bringing in New Japan and NWA and Impact. So you're getting all this variety as opposed to the, the 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 Mick Wrestling product that Vince is shoving down your throat each and every Monday and Thursday. So I think that's what AEW gets out of the situation. But as far as AEW needing to bring Impact Stars on the TV, they don't. They can barely get the guys they have on TV now. That's the truth. 
They, they had Team Taz coming on TV for a month in 20-second skits building to some sort of breakup between um, uh, Ricky Starks and, and Brian Cage. So Chris Jericho is not wrong. And I would say the same thing to anybody else. As an Impact fan, somebody who's sitting right here right now hosting an Impact podcast, Impact is totally getting the benefit from AEW working with them. And it doesn't matter if Kenny Omega is coming in, you know, looking extra strong and all of that. If people are watching to see Kenny Omega, then Impact is winning. Straight up. That's all it is. There's no two ways about it. And so I think people just got to look at it from a realistic standpoint. Like, don't, don't think about it in terms of who's getting buried or anything like that. Impact is more relevant since AEW started working with them. Period. There is no two ways about it. Impact is more relevant. They're in the conversation more since AEW started working with them. And that's really all you can ask. So Impact is benefiting greatly from working with AEW. And I, I just, I can't see anybody who sees it otherwise. Now, speaking of this AEW Impact relationship, one thing that uh, Tony Khan said, he started calling himself the Forbidden Door, right? Opening the Forbidden Door, which was in reference to working with New Japan, working with Impact. But we see that's been very limited in terms of Impact going back towards AEW. Well, one person on the Impact roster, Deanna Perrazzo, she's opening her own Forbidden Door. She showed up at uh, to challenge the Reina De Reyes champion, and it looks like Deanna Perrazzo is going to be challenging for that title in the future. So she could be her own version of Kenny Omega's belt collector character going forward. So Deanna Perrazzo is opening her own Forbidden Door, and to me, that's very cool, something I love to see. Now, here's what I think is probably the biggest news coming out of Rebellion. We got the Slammiversary 2021 teaser, and yes, it looks like they're rehashing the, the attraction from last year of teasing the arrival of some of the recent WWE releases, but to me... The bigger tease coming out of that tra that 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 trailer is it looks like they're teasing potentially returning the show in front of live fans. They had a close up of the Ryman Auditorium building. The Ryman Auditorium is in Nashville, Tennessee, and as of May fourteenth, Nashville, Tennessee is lifting all of its COVID restrictions with the exception of an uh, uh, an indoor mask mandate for people that are going to be in in, in uh, going places indoors. So if that's the case, then Slammiversary 2021 could very well be the return of fans to Impact Wrestling. So to me, that's a way bigger... The, the, the fans will be the biggest superstars that Impact could possibly have back in the building. And if, you know, it, tell me this for, for everybody out there in the comment section. If you had a chance to go to Slammiversary 2021, if you just happened to be in the Nashville area, or if it was going to be in your town, would you go? Are you guys comfortable going to packed buildings and being in, 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 in a crowd uh, right now? Just, you know, listen, everybody has their own feelings about, you know, COVID. Some people are vaccinated, some people aren't. But me personally, I got a vaccine, and I'm still not comfortable going into big crowds full of people right now. So, you know, if, um, you know, if Impact was throwing a show in my area right now, I wouldn't go. I, I, just, I just, I'm not ready, man. I'm just not ready. And so, but so many people are different, though. I want to hear... How you guys? How you guys feel? Drop in your in, in in the comments. Tell me, tell me your name. Tell me where you're from, and tell me if you would be going to Slam Version 2021 if it was being held in your town. I want to hear that from you. So, so shout out to you guys for giving me the feedback that I'm gonna use this for the next episode. Now, as far as this week's episode of Impact Wrestling, it was jam packed full of good matches. Uh, Trey Miguel and 
Um, oh my God, who would Trey Miguel wrestle to open the show? Trey Miguel though. Oh, was it was it Rohit Raju? I forget. It might have been. But um, yo, Trey Miguel, this dude, he he just sees wrestling in like a different way. Like the, just the angles from which he puts on moves and 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 gets into situations. He's just he's just looking at this from an angle that the normal eye does not. Like this dude is so next level, man. Like Trey Miguel, his his genius won't be appreciated until he performs on a bigger stage and more people get to see what I see. That this dude is just he is he's where wrestling's going. Like he's he's on to the next thing. I'm telling you. Like in years from now, we're gonna look back at Trey Miguel and say he was an innovator of the style that people love to do now. Watch. Um, but he had a, a great match. He won, and um, you know there was there was other good matches. You know, um, but the the major things coming out of this show, right, was you know we got closer to Taylor Wilde and Deanna Perrazzo. They moved that story forward a little bit. We got um, Luke Gallows getting a win back against uh, was it Finn Juice Robinson. And um, we got Moose getting the win over James Storm to qualify for the uh, the, the six way main event at Under Siege. So we got all six of our participants for the six way main event, and those six people are. It's gonna be Chris Saban, Chris Bay, Sammy Callahan, Zach Ryan. Uh, I can't, I can't not call this guy Zach Ryder. Matt Cardona, Trey Miguel, and Moose. Which is pretty much almost anybody you would want to see on an Impact show. So I'm curious as to how they're going to fill out the rest of Under Siege. Because it seems like most of their good talent is in this match. But it's going to be a six-way main event to determine the next challenger for Kenny Omega's Impact Wrestling World Championship. I'm... Very interested as to where they're going. This now they didn't say that the next challenger is going to be you know when they would cash that type of shot in. If this if if the next challenger is going to uh, challenge Kenny Omega at Slam Anniversary, you got to think the person winning is Moose, right? I mean I don't know. When I originally talked about this months ago, I said that Moose would win the title back from Kenny Omega at Bound for Glory. But another news item that was circulating this week is that Moose announced that his contract with Impact is up in June and one of his goals is to win the Impact Championship before he leaves the company. So we'll, we're just going to have to see how all this plays out, where it goes. But if Moose is leaving in June and he wants to win the title, then he would have to be the one getting the the, the title match at Slammiversary. But again, I think Slammiversary is late in June. So if your contract's up June 30th, maybe you can win it and then lose it on the next episode of Impact and never be seen again. Other than that, I don't know how you would plan to pull that off. So, you know, there's a lot to be yet to be to, to be seen. I don't think Impact feels that strongly about Moose to, to where they would make him the champion. If they did, I think they would have done it by now. So, you know, let's see where all this is going. But the main event for Under Siege is set. Uh, which your, your your six men going to be Moose, Trey Miguel, Matt Cardona, Sammy Callahan, Chris Bay, and Chris Saban. Should be a fun main event. Um, and if it's free on Impact Plus, I'll watch it. If not, I'll look for the highlights on Twitter because they post everything two minutes after it happens on Twitter anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, there was something else. There was another thing on this show. Well, there was, I feel like there was another thing that I wanted to talk about. There was, oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> there was a new guy who we hadn't seen before called VSK. And he was, uh, he was there to take on El Fantasmo, who's here from New Japan. And I got to say, I love the energy that these New Japan guys come out with. They're still wrestling in front of no crowd just like everybody else. But this guy came out there like he was at WrestleMania. Like, his energy was just through the roof. And I'm like, man, if Impact could just get everybody to bring that when they come out, this show, I think, would be so much more popular. People would, because when you turn on TV and you see somebody who looks like they genuinely are enjoying what they're doing, having fun, it makes you want to watch. 
And so I think if Impact, you know, they got to do something with their atmosphere to get that more out of their own wrestlers who wrestle there all the time. All right, guys. That's it. That's all I got for tonight. I promise next week we'll be back to normal with some, 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 I want to read some of your comments. We'll talk more about the show. Talk more about the Impact news. Oh, Jordan Grace re-signed with Impact. That's another big piece of news this week. Uh, let me know what you think about that down in the comments. Let me know. But <clears throat> I have got to get some sleep because I have two small children who run my life. <laughs> and, but as you can see, I'm still not neglecting you, okay? So give this video some love, all right? Share it with your friends. Share it with your parents. It's Mother's Day. Uh, share it with your mom. Listen, everybody, have a good time. Enjoy Impact Wrestling. But most importantly, enjoy this show. Tweet about it. Write about it on Facebook. Post it. Share it. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you go to church, tell your pastor about it, okay? All right? Follow me on Twitter, at TW Talking About. Follow the Impact Lounge. Subscribe to this channel. And let's bring more people into the conversation. I'm TW, and I'll see you next week.